when you look at some of the fighters in uh, mixed martial arts, and some of them are just look absolutely ridiculous, um, like steroid wise, um, what percentage of fighters do you think actually take steroids? Uh, you know what, I'm sure there's fighters that take a lot of steroids, and I know there's a lot of HGH going on, uh, but you know, uh, for me, I, I prefer to go organic and, and you know, be healthy, and you know, I, we don't know the side effects, so I don't know the side effects, so I'm not going to mess with that. You know, so far, so good. And I've, been, I've been pretty healthy. And just uh, put it this way, it's been two years since I've transition all the way, like, as, as much as I could, I'll eat organic. Of course, on these trips, I can't eat organic or stuff like that, but I try to eat clean as possible. And, you know, of course, you always got to have a splurge day if you have these, or two splurge days. You know, just gotta keep it clean. What do you do about the pain after training and uh, after your fights and stuff? Ice bath. <laughs> try it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard at first, but it actually, you know, uh, works out pretty good. And, you know, like uh, for before fights, I, I get a massage three times a week, at least an hour and a half to two hours. Then I do Epsom salt bath uh, at night, and then and then if I'm still in pain, I wake up. I'm in pain. I, I do ice bath. If you guys don't know what ice bath is? You can do it either in your tub, or you can get a big garbage can, fill it up with like water, not all the way to the top, and have two 25 pounds of ice pour in there. You stay in there for 50. 10 to 15 minutes, where you, the water's here. We just jump and drink each other. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll want to have sex after that. <laughs> Uh, Gary Shaw recently resigned from president as elite XC. Do you know why he did it, or? Well, he totally sounds like an interviewer. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Gary Shaw? Uh, I call him Shady Shaw. I mean, he um, he's came after me when I have a contract offer, handed me some some money uh, as a check wise, and says uh, just breach it. We have good lawyers, and you know I'm like strike first lawyer. Uh, sued you because of Frank. I'm not going to do the same thing. You know? And at, at the same time, integrity-wise, and you know, he's always like, "Come, oh, holy, you have CBS. <laughs> Look what happened. Ended up getting booted off the board or whatever. Uh, now he just promotes the event. Huh. And someone else takes over." Have you changed your training um, as you age and stuff? Like in the 20s, you did the same stuff, but now your fight has changed, but also your Gotten older and stuff to change your training at all? For that? Actually, I do. I just listen to my body and yeah. I, I train smarter. You know, if uh, something's not working, mm -hmm. uh, don't do it. But definitely conditioning, that's key. Because in, in MMA, a lot of guys are very mm -hmm. talented. They look great in the first round, but then they're terrible in the second and third round. They lose the fight. You got to come in, you got to be in shape. That's like, I think that's like 50% of the battle is conditioning and the rest is mental. Of course, you got to have skills to get that level. Conditioning You'll always be a little bit. Yeah, I, I won't cut to 170. I did my fair share of cutting in high school and college wrestling. What are your thoughts on George St. Pierre, John Fitch? Yeah, I trained with John Fitch. He's looking good. Anything can happen. He's going to go in there and he's going to engage. And I believe if he if he engages, he's, he could come out victorious. But George St. Pierre at a high level. And I'm sure they train like, like George St. Pierre's not, uh, you know, afraid of anything. But overconfident wise, um, you know, he comes in overconfident. John Fitch, his jiu-jitsu is like really good, and his strikes are pretty good, and he's got great conditioning. So. Keep saying engage. It's not just being more aggressive when you're sparring, when you're fighting. If if you notice, like say. Um, Every single person who fought against Anderson Silva in the UFC, they didn't like take the fight to Anderson, except Dan Henderson in the first round. They were deployed. That's that's engaging. If you're if you're fighting like this, backing up the whole time, and like most fights now, like I feel like Mike Swick, who's like you know he, he, he we train together. I feel like if he engaged this fight, he would dominate more. Like the last two fights, look look how he won, winning you know decisions. But before he was. Beat everyone by a knockout, and now the 185. Now he goes down to 170, and he's getting unanimous, uh, you know, winning by unanimous, unanimous decisions. So it's 
It's how you approach the fight. If you go in there and you engage, fight, throw punches, throw kicks, anything can happen. Because if you don't want to throw, what's going to land? What's going to change the fight? If you were to fight Anderson Silva, what would be your game plan? Just like right I would be in and out, and I wouldn't be scared of him. Just get inside, stick your glue, or be... I wouldn't, like, get inside so he can, uh, you know, like, lock my neck and start hitting, yeah. but I would be in and out. Like, I would Hooks engage with combinations, and I would back out, make him miss, and I would go back in again. But I would try to stand there mono for mono because, of course, he's got the reach, and uh, he's got the experience. I would make him get, you know, frustrate him, and then kind of pull out harder. Different moves where I, I would like faint and yeah. make him react to it and throw different things. So they go out your throws would just demoralize him. Yeah, but you know, he's also hard to throw. Dan Henderson took him down in the first round, but the second round he couldn't do anything because what happened with Dan Henderson, instead of sticking the punching and kicking and takedowns, he just went to either takedowns or punching and kicking. He didn't put it all together. So the key thing is putting it all together and, and going in there and taking the fight to Anderson. How would you defend against this clinch? How would I defend? As soon as he, if, if he gets clinched, I would buy lock. And I would try, you know, of course, there's also, um, there's, 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 a, there, there's also like, like a wrestling. If someone clinches here, and you clinch here, key thing is I, I would, I would at least block this so the knees doesn't come up. But right, right here, of course, if he takes my body, key thing is I would stay right tight, right here. My, my leg would be in between his, but when, if I want to get away, is I'm going to use my shoulders, and then, of course, he's going to clinch real tight. Well, I'm going to shuck away. I'm going to shuck it away right here. This is a wrestling move. Shuck it away. Or if, if he's clenching tight, body lock. Or just stay in tight. Hips up right here. And, of course, he's going to try to come over with, like, elbows, but I'm going to lock it down right here. I'm going to lock him down right here. And, of course, when I shuck away, I break away. And I'm going to take side kicks on him. And, you know... Who knows? <laughs> Anything else? Let's take group pictures and... <coughs>